John chapter 1, and we'll be covering the first 18 verses here. Father, thank you for this day, and God, I thank you for your word. God, your word is so true, and God, your word is really a love letter written for us. And God, I thank you that uh, you that we have the word of God to study. I thank you for our Wednesday night worship and prayer meeting, and God, I pray you be with the Awana program, and God, we're so excited about how much that has grown, and be with our youth discipleship, and even the young couples. Uh, God, I, I, I just appreciate Cody doing that. So Lord, be with us as we study your word, and God, I pray that tonight you would just inspire us. God, I pray that we would understand uh, who you are in Jesus Christ, and God, that uh, really you and Jesus are just one. And so God, bless this uh, study that we have together. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Title of my sermon tonight is The Eternal Word. The Eternal Word. And there's handouts back there. If you didn't get a handout, uh, you can get one. Uh, anybody need a handout? Ted's there. Okay. Down here at the front, if you don't mind, Ted. One over there. Okay. But on this, on this handout... Uh, we have three points tonight. Number one, Jesus is the Word. Okay? You can fill in that blank. Jesus is the Word. Number two, John is the witness. Jesus is the Word. John is the witness. Number three, the Word became flesh. The Word became flesh. You know, John, the disciple that Jesus loved, wrote the Gospel of John. It was written for the Jews and Gentiles of presenting Jesus as the only begotten Son of God. Another point John makes is that Jesus would, would fulfill Old Testament prophecy. But the most important theme that runs through the book of John is salvation. And we know John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If I had to pick, pick one scripture out of the book of John, uh, to use and to teach, that would be it. Matthew, Mark, and Luke wrote uh, about Jesus, describing the events in Jesus' life. John wrote, emphasizing the meaning of these events. Our scripture text declares that Jesus is the Word, the light, and the only begotten Son of God. John chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You see three times the Word. And you could point, I mean, I mean you could substitute the word Jesus there and, and do the, it, it not do anything uh, wrong in interpreting the Scripture. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. And uh, matter of fact, Jesus said uh, in another part, of John, he said, I and my Father are one. And you have to understand that Jesus was in creation. God and Jesus always was. All right? You go back to creation. They both were before time even began. So when you look at the Word, there's, you know, there's two emphasis here that I want to say. One, one is the Word is Jesus, and the Word is God's holy word. And he was in the beginning with God. Genesis 1-1, we know, you know, uh, you know, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now look at verse 3. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. If you want to know, uh, you know, the definition there, or so, you know, an explanation there, go to Colossians. All right, we don't have time to do that tonight because there's a different emphasis on the scripture that I'm talking about. In Colossians chapter 1, and start in about verse 18, and you'll understand more about who Jesus was. But all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. So we know God and Jesus are and has always been eternal, okay? There's no beginning. They always was. And when we say eternal, 
uh, that talks about eternity too. Uh, we will see them both in heaven. And in him was life. And the word life was used 36 times in the Gospel of John. So that has to be a very important thing in the Gospel of John. When you see a word used 36 times, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And we all know how important light is. Even in, back in Genesis, when God said, let there be light, okay? You cannot have life without light, okay? So we see that. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Look at Matt, hold your finger there and go to Matthew 3 with me. Matthew chapter 3. And look down at verse 13. We're talking about... <clears throat> We're talking about God, we're talking about Jesus. And the third part of the Trinity is the Holy Spirit. Okay, the Holy Spirit. It says, Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and are you coming to me? I mean, I couldn't imagine to be in uh, John the Baptist's place, and Jesus coming up and saying, hey, would you baptize me? I'd be nervous as could be, all right? And so he, he asked John to do that, but Jesus answered and said, permit it uh, to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. And he was simply trying to tell him, and, and there's several things about Jesus' baptism. One, he went down into the water. It was immersion. He went into the Jordan River. Another thing, uh, when they were establishing the, the New Testament church in Acts chapter 2, that baptism was a sign of salvation. Sa salvation was, was a part of the Jordan thing, but also uh, it, it made the Acts chapter 2, that was an identification of being a Christian. Baptism doesn't save you. Okay, I hope you know that. All right, and I, I can give you two reasons why, and there's many more than that. Number one, nobody in the Old Testament was baptized, okay? And in the New Testament, the re other thing is, Jesus looked at the thief on the cross and said, today you will be with me in paradise. Now, I believe ba baptism is an act of obedience. I believe baptism is a testimony, but it doesn't save you. Now, here's the verse I wanted you to hear. And when he had been baptized... Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God. We see two things there. We see Jesus is part of the Trinity. We see the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, who I am well pleased. What else did he see? That was God speaking to them. So we see, you know, all these, the Trinity in this. And, and when you think about who Jesus is, all right, uh, he, he is the Word. You know, he, he used uh, his example of baptism, and, and it, it was just like it catapulted him. It started his ministry, okay? And, and folks, uh, one of the things that we need to do as Christians we need to be in the Word of God. We need to pick it up every day of our lives, not just Monday through Friday. And, and I understand on Sunday, you know, if you come Sunday morning, Sunday night, you pick it up twice. But I have learned, and I believe the Scripture tells us in Psalm chapter 1, meditate day and night. I start every day of my life with the Word, and I use... I use the daily breads uh, that we have out here. I use that as my, my one uh, in, in the morning. And then at night, I use a personal Bible stu study and, and another one. And so the reason I'm telling you this is because if you want to get to know Jesus better, you have to get in the Word. You have to be in the Word, all right? So that, that is very important. And then basically what... This is saying about creation and all. Jesus is the center of everything we are as Christians. Jesus is the center. And John, also, John chapter 8. 
John 8, look at verse 12. John 8, 12. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Folks, I'm telling you, the Word, Jesus, is the light of life. I would have loved to have been one of the disciples or been here when Jesus was here. But you have to understand, when we get into the Word, we see the story of Jesus. We hear the story. We, we know His heart. We, we know His compassion. And, and, and the goal, I said, even in, you know, uh, towards January the 1st, the, in, 19, or in uh, 2024, I want to be more like Jesus. And the best way to be more like Jesus is to get in His Word. And when that Word gets in us, our lights will shine also. So we see in the first uh, five verses there that Jesus is the Word. Jesus was God's Word to mankind. God's Word to mankind. And you could look at the life of Jesus and see what we should be doing as Christians. Number two, John is the witness. John is the witness. And there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of that light. Now the word witness is used 47 times in the book of John. What is that? And to me it's given the, you know, the, the events were Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But here is the application of the word. And if you mention what, a word like that in a book, you know, 47 times, it has to be important. And John was a forerunner of Christ. We know that. We know that he would be preaching, and John was the country boy, okay? He wasn't a city guy, all right? He, he had the fur on him. You know, he's eating honey, and, you know, he's eating berries and maybe some locusts and things like that. And uh, he was the fire and brimstone type, type preacher, but he was so effective in his witness, there were people that said, even to John, are you the Messiah? Folks, what a compliment. What a compliment when somebody... So John obviously was a great witness uh, and a forerunner of Jesus Christ. And of course, uh, we are speaking about John the Baptist. And it says uh, that, that all through him might believe. And it's not all through, all, all through uh, John. He's talking about Jesus, okay? He spread the gospel. He said there's a man coming. Uh, and, and even in Old Testament prophecy, hold your finger there. And, and I love to go back and forth, uh, New Testament and Old Testament. Turn to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah 40, verse 3. Isaiah 43 says, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And this is some of the, you, you can find this very scripture in, uh, you know, in the book of John and in the New Testament. Every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight. The rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. When did we first on earth see the glory of God? At Jesus' birth. At Jesus' birth. And folks, we should be reflections of God's glory and Jesus' glory. Folks, it's not about us, okay? You don't have to be an orator. You don't have to, you know, made an A in speech. You can be a witness, and folks, a witness, another word for witness is a testimony. If you have been saved, you have a testimony. You can tell someone else what Jesus has done in your life. And you know what about your testimony? Nobody can refute that. Nobody can say, that didn't happen. Why? You weren't there. I mean, you were there and they weren't there. Excuse me, I said that backwards. So he's saying... We need to be a witness. We need to be a testimony revealing the glory of God. And all flesh shall see it together, 
for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And the voice said, cry out. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and it is loveliness is like the flower of the field. Well, if you walked out, you can just walk out in where our flagpole is. Is it green right now? No, it's not green unless there's weeds. If it's Bermuda, then it's dormant, okay? So what he's saying is, hey, we are brought to life. When we have salvation, we are brought to life. And folks, it takes two things to be saved. You need to know the Word of God. You need to know what the Word of God says about salvation, and you need the Holy Spirit uh, uh, pricking your heart, you know, calling you to salvation. That's the way we are saved. And, and he, that's what he's saying. It explains it better in verse 7. The grass withers and the fire flower fades because the breath of the Lord blows upon it. And, and again, we, he's talking about seasons there. Okay, seasons. And it says, and surely the people are grass and the grass withers. I got news for you folks. We're all going to die. You are going to die unless we are raptured out of here. All right? Nobody lives. I mean, we, you know, we did funeral a couple of Fridays ago. She was 99 years old. We've got a lady 101 years old in our church. But I'm telling you, everyone dies. The grass withers, the flowers, but here, here it is. But the word of our God stands forever. Man, do you not love the word of God? Do you not want to study the word of God? It says those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they shall be filled. Folks, I'm telling you, the Word of God. And I really don't understand, and the few times that I've heard it, it's usually been a youth. Okay, and I'm not picking on youth, I'm just telling you, when I've heard it, they'll just say, well, I think the Bible's kind of boring. I'm like, what are you reading? The part I read, I mean, when you think, I mean, there's all kinds of parts. And again, you know, you get into Chronicles and you get into some of those places. One, I can't pronounce the words anyway. The names I can't pronounce. All right? And and I know when I get to pronounce them, I'll look up and y'all are chuckling. Don't act like you don't laugh. All right? I struggle with the names and the words. But the Word of God, matter of fact, it's alive, folks. The Word is alive. It's like a two-edged sword. It cuts us coming and going. And it, it, it permeates our very being in our heart when we will... There's two mistakes we make in the Word of God. Number one, we try to conquer it. We get a Bible passage and we read it as fast as we can. We're thinking, hey, I read my Bible today. You've got to slow down to understand the Word of God. And the second thing is, is the interpretation of the Word. People are, people are you know, they just say, I, I don't know all this. Like Revelation, I, I've had several tell me, you know, you put it in simple terms. That's because I have a simple mind. Okay, I am not a Bible scholar. But the second thing is, you have to pray and ask the Lord to give you discernment in what you are reading. But the Word of our God stands forever. And again, John was a witness of that light. Let's look back in verse 8. Or verse 7, excuse me. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. And folks, if and again, I know you, you haven't been called to the ministry, okay? But do you realize that you preach a sermon every day? Every day, people look at your life. Every day, they listen to what you say. Somebody, you are influencing somebody unless you never leave the house and you're by yourself. And so people look at our life. And they need to see the Word of God being applied in our lives so that they can learn. I love it when somebody asks me, well, why do you? And, I'll, and I'm telling you, that throws open a door. Why do you go to church on Sunday? Why do you give? Why do you think there's really a heaven? Why, do you, why are you so committed? And it just throws the door open to a witnessing situation. We are to be witnesses of that light. That light was the true light, which gives the light to every man. 
Folks, the gospel is light. And it, God wants everyone to be saved. We know not everyone will be saved. We understand that. But we don't know who is chosen. Who it, we don't know who God has chosen. We don't know who is predestined. So we need to share that light with everyone. Matter of fact, in Luke chapter 7, I find this scripture amazing. John was arrested, and he was in prison, and John was having doubts in his own life, okay? In his own life. And he sent messengers to Jesus. And, and basically, he said, you know, are you the one? Look, uh, verse 19, it says, And John, calling two disciples, he said, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? Now look what Jesus said about John in verse 28. For I say to you, among those born of women, there is, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. Now think of the prophets, folks. Elijah, <laughs> I mean, he was probably the most well-known one in the Old Testament. And he's saying John's life, his witness, his testimony is the greatest. But then notice how he does the application the second part, but he who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. What is he saying? He's saying it doesn't matter. You don't have to be a preacher to lead someone to Christ. You don't have to be a preacher. You know, it's, it's just that you have the light. Jesus is the light. Jesus is the word. You, you open the word of God up. You look at that light. You learn from that light. And you get your testimony down, and you share it with somebody, and somebody gets saved, then you are just as important as John the Baptist. Man, that, that is something. I'd love for Jesus to say that about me. And that's what he's saying. He's saying our job. John, did, John the Baptist did his job. He was well known. I mean, there were, I don't know how many people saved under his ministry. But folks, even, even Jesus said at one time, you, greater thing can you do than I, than I can do. You ever, you ever think about that verse? It, it, you know, it bothered me for a while. I'm thinking, man, you are Jesus. What are you talking about? Well, his ministry was just three years long. I mean, I've been, I've been on this earth 65 years, okay? And I'm not, I'm not caring to to myself to Jesus, but you can get a lot done in 65 years. Think of Billy Graham's life. How many people you think got saved under his ministry? Okay, and it's not about being better than someone. It's saying that we all have the same goal. We all have the same thing that we should have in our lives. We need to bear witness of that light. I mean, we got the Word. We've got Jesus. we got the written Word of God in our lives. We have no excuses is what Jesus is saying there. So we see. Jesus is the Word, John is the witness, and the Word became flesh. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came into his own, and his own did not receive him. I mean, you know, even folks would just say, man, he, he's son of a carpenter. He's from Nazareth. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? All right, people, even after seeing his miracles, did not believe in Jesus. I mean, I, even Judas, you think about Judas. He'd been around him the whole time. I, I, my mind just can't wrap my head around, how can you spend that much time, see what Jesus did, and, and not know him, truly know him as your personal Lord and Savior? Folks, it's a choice. People have a choice. And, and even Jesus himself, you know, he, he was a Jew. He, you know, he said he didn't come to destroy law. He, he came to make it alive, okay? His own people did not recognize him and accept him as Jesus Christ. So why would we, you know, so, sometimes, and it hurts worse when persecution comes from your own family or some old friends, but the, Jesus' family, his brothers, they, they, didn't, they didn't know who Jesus was for the longest of time. They, they just thought, well, that was just Jesus. I, I mean, who's Jesus? You know, as far as that. Verse 11, and he came to his own, his own did not receive him, but as many as 
received him, to them gave him the right to become children of God. Folks, you're a child of God. Man, our Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father is, is, is really our Father. You know, anytime I deal and I talk with people, uh, you, know, you know, orphans or their dad left them or somewhere like that, I always say, now wait a minute, you have to understand, you have a Father. And that Father is up in heaven. He will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. We are children of God. And that's, that's a privilege to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And John later on in chapter 3 uh, speaks of being born again, being born again. And folks, that's, and, and if you want to use another phrase for born again, it, you could just slide the phrase born again from above in there, okay? It is Jesus. It is Jesus' blood that paid for our sins. It is Jesus' death on the cross. It is him being buried. It is the resurrection of Jesus Christ that assures us that we have eternal life. So we're not talking about, again, the flesh, our, the flesh, you know, this flesh, all right? He's talking about the world. And uh, we spoke of that this past Sunday. Now look at verse 14. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And Jesus, again, folks, we believe in the virgin birth. Jo you know, Joseph was not his biological father. If he was his biological father, then he couldn't have been Jesus. He would have been born into sin. But placed by the Holy Spirit, he was different because of that. But yet he took on the form of man. If you look at Jesus, and again, you know, every picture I ever see of Jesus, he has a beard on, okay? It's okay to grow a beard, all right? And, and he was human. If you pinched him, he felt it, okay? If you pulled his hair, he felt it. And so, even in the cross and his trial and all that in the beating, he felt he came in human flesh. He came as a man. And really, the best example is he was 100% God and 100% man. Okay, he, he hungered, he thirsted, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Oh, man, you want to talk about truth? You talk about Jesus. You want to talk about grace? We need to talk about Jesus. God's riches at Christ's expense. Verse 15, and John bore witness of him, and he cried, cried out this saying, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And again, he's taking on the, the very same thought that we saw earlier in the, in the first chapter of John. John was simply saying, hey, I'm just a spokesman. I'm just the forerunner. He is the man, okay? He is the man. Verse 16, and of his fullness we have all received and grace for grace. Well, we just read that we are children of God, and we will not be children of God uh, you know, apart from grace. It's faith and grace, and we know that. And when you talk about the fullness, fullness is, you know, uh, again, it, it's learning more. It's maturing more in Christ. We can't be Jesus because we're not perfect, but we can be full of Jesus. All right? I always laugh at that that person that I don't know who thought of it, but it was a great one. If a mosquito bit me, they they would they would buzz away saying it, singing, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. I want to be so full of Jesus. You think about it. Jesus on trial said not a word. Someone come up and struck him in the face. He did absolutely nothing. And some people would see see that as weakness. Now folks that's strength. 
Jesus could have took that person out with the with a thought he could have took that person out because he was God also. But he, fullness, fullness, he was Jesus. He was God in human flesh, in grace for grace. There is not a person in this building or listening to me on air that doesn't need the grace of God in their life. We all need God's grace. We all mess up. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came from Jesus Christ. Folks, that's the summation there of the first chapter of John. Grace, God's amazing grace. And truth, truth is the word. The word is living. Jesus is the word. Jesus is alive. His word is alive. And we need to get and stay in his word. Came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. All right? You can't see him. I mean, he just passed by Moses, and man, Moses was glowing, you know, like a glow stick. All right? And in in heaven, we're going to see him face to face, but we will have our glorified bodies. Okay? We have not seen God. He's not appeared to us. We never face God face to face. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. See, the law just reveals sin. Okay, the law cannot save you. The law just tells you that you're a sinner. The law tells you you messed up. But the law cannot save you. You can't live up to the law. My soul, there was 600 and something laws. I mean, it, it, was, it was a ridiculous amount. And the scribes and the Pharisees, they broke the law but acted like they were perfect. All right? And we know we're not perfect. It was Jesus Christ. It was Jesus Christ. It was his blood. And in the book of John, the only begotten son is used ten times. And really, Jesus' pur- purpose was to make us children of God. And uh, when you think about that, Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth, and Jesus is the life. Ephesians chapter 2, I know you know this scripture, but we need to be reminded of it. Ephesians 2 verse 8, for by grace you have been saved, God's riches at Christ's expense, through faith. Faith is belief. Faith is belief. What it what is belief? B E live is the second part of faith. We live out what we believe if we are truly saved. We have faith in God. We have faith in the word of God. We have faith in God's word. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. You can't clean and clean up enough, you can't go to church enough, you can't give enough to be saved. All right, it's through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast. I'll look at verse 10. For we are his workmanship. I've always wondered, <laughs> and I know why he didn't do it, but I, I, I think it'd be cool if when you got saved, he just, Boop, that you go up right then. All right, we wouldn't have to mess with all this. But what, what are we? We are his people. We are here on earth, and we have a purpose, and that is to show people the glory of God, to show people faith and exercise faith in our lives, to, to point people toward salvation, to use the Word of God to, to lead people to Christ. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God hath prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Folks, we are privileged as Christians to have the eternal word in our lives. We've got God in heaven looking over us. We've got Jesus' example of his everyday life and his ministry, his example around us. And we have the Holy Spirit inside of us, that dunamis, that, that power that we have because of Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, that Holy Spirit power can give us boldness. Give us boldness. 
Father, thank you for this day. And God, thank you for your eternal word. And God, when I think of who Jesus is and who he was and what he has done, God, we could never repay, never repay Jesus for what he did for us. And God, it was your love. Your love sent him from a perfect place to live in a broken, messed up world. God, he showed us that with God, all things are possible. So God, I pray as we think about the eternal word that we would first be thankful and grateful that we have accepted that word into our lives and that we have been saved. And then God, I pray that it would help us to understand there are still people out there that need to be saved. There's still people that out there, and that's the reason you haven't come yet. There's still people that need to be saved. And God, I pray that as we go through this life, the 2024, that we would be like John and we would be a witness, a good witness for Jesus and that we would show people Jesus and his glory. So God, thank you that, you know, for your miracles and, and truly, I believe with all my heart, when somebody walks down an aisle and gets saved, that is a miracle. You have taken his soul out of hell and you have translated it into heaven. And God, for that, we are forever thankful. God, thank you for the book of John. Uh, it's just an awesome book. And God, I just pray that you continue to bless our studies. Lord, just be with us the rest of this week. And God, I pray that we would just let our light shine. Jesus is the light. We bear witness of that light. And God, I pray people uh, around us this week can see that light. For all to see. And God, when they ask us why, what, what is going on, I pray that we tell them about Jesus. The difference Jesus made in our life. God, thank you for the power of the eternal word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.